Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. Now we're going to start a look at natural language processing with Keras. In particular, we're going to begin by looking at some tools that will help us pre-process the data before we send it to the neural network. We're going to talk about Spacey. For the latest on my AI course and projects, click subscribe and the bell next to it to be notified of every new video. There are two primary ways that you can deal with natural language processing with neural networks. There is dealing with the text at the character level. This is like we did with the text generation for pirate stories with Treasure Island, where basically you train an LSTM on a large body of text and it reproduces that text. The second way that you can deal with it is on the word level. And we dealt with it on the word level for the captioning. Really, you can make both techniques work for any type of problem. Word level NLP can be good because you can use additional libraries available to you in Python to actually process those words before they go into the actual neural network. Character level has its advantages because you're not doing that, because you're letting the neural network actually figure out all of the things about English, suffixes, prefixes, all these grammatical type expressions. Some techniques are better for others. The more historic method for natural language processing was heavy grammatical analysis. The more modern and newer techniques are pretty much end-to-end, -end, where the neural networks operate on the raw text directly. However, you still will sometimes do some processing at the word level. So we're going to see how to use some of the Python packages to work with the actual words that are in your text before you actually send them on to the neural network. As far as natural language processing libraries available for Python, I mean, other than TensorFlow, there are several, but two of the ones that I've seen particularly stand out in Kaggle competitions and related literature to this are NLTK and Spacey. NLTK was around for longer than Spacey. It's been used for quite some time. I've used both of these. At this point, I prefer Spacey, and that's the one that we will be using for the class. It's a little more object-oriented, and object-oriented in a good way, because believe me, there can be object-oriented in a bad way, meaning that it literally transforms the words into individual objects that give you a fair amount of information about these individual words. Now, installing Spacey, it should have already been installed when you went through in Module 1 and did all the pip installs that I gave you for this class. Spacey was one of the packages that I specified that you should install. However, if you just install Spacey, it won't work. It needs a lexicon, a dictionary. And I'll suggest that you install the English one for this class because that's what we're using. If you haven't installed the dictionary, most likely you haven't, when you try to run the code in this module, you're going to get an error such as this. To install Spacey Dictionary, this is the command that I found works about the best. If you run into problems, you may want to Google them or post something in the in the class Piazza or Slack, and I'll see what I can do as far as if you're getting a specific error. You can also post something in the comments. I've run into just about every error imaginable. Well, that's not true. Somebody always surprises me. But I, I can't necessarily always debug everything because I have to have it physically on my computer giving you a problem. So believe me, if you get an error, Google is your friend. Just copy and paste this and put it into Google and you'll probably be taken promptly to Stack Overflow. Some of the terms that you will hear with this, tokenization is a big one. And tokenization is where you take sentences and you break them into the individual words. This is more difficult than it sounds. Let me just put a cell above here. Consider some of these sentences. If I just gave you the sentence, this is a test, period. That'd be easy to tokenize. The words are, this is an attest. So there's four words in there. You will then get more complicated sentences like, okay, but what about this? Now you need to decide how are you going to tokenize this. You may not want to lose that comma. That comma might be useful or maybe you want the comma to go away. So if you're breaking this into a list of words, it might be okay, comma, but what about this? So you have to decide if you're breaking on white space or not. Then you have things like this. If you're breaking on 
punctuation, now it's going to be U as a word, S as a word, and A as a word. You would like to keep that together, but unless you have some knowledge of the language, you won't really know what is going on here. These will just seem like three sort of disjoint letters, and that's why you have to install the dictionary for this. You also have to deal with things like, okay, I don't typically hyphenate data set, but you may not want to break those into two words. So you have to deal with hyphens like that, but sometimes hyphens do, like if you're going to do an em dash or something like that, where you do a rapid shift, you wouldn't want to combine that into this no. It's doing a abrupt change in the sentence. I think I will do this. No, wait, I will do this, or maybe that sounds better. So these are some of the issues that you will run into when you're trying to tokenize sentences. And look at the example one that I have here. There's the U period, K period, so you don't, you want that to stay together. And the dollar sign, you might be tempted to strip that off, but that does give you information about that one. So we can run this and I will show you how Spacey tokenizes. Tokenizing is probably one of the most common things that you will do with word level natural language process. Another common one that you'll do is it will strip the words to their root form. So buying would become buy. Now you're losing some information there, but that way if you're doing simple lookups, look would become look, the rest of these are all in their base form. But this breaks it up into a nice set of words for you. So you don't have to parse it and do the tokenization yourself. Believe me, never, never look for spaces and use regular expressions and do tokenization yourself. It's actually a pretty hard problem that requires a dictionary to be loaded. That way you can keep things like UK together. This is also kind of neat. I don't use this as much. I prefer the end to end where I'm not dealing with English grammatical forms like verbs and adjectives and things like this. This gives you Spacey's best guess at what these words are. Now the problem though is it's contextual. So a word can operate sometimes as either a noun or a verb. It just depends on how the word's being used. So this can be very difficult. It's not just a simple lookup. This can also be useful because this can let you very quickly quickly figure out what different words are as far as if they're numbers. There's other ones in here too. You can like none. There's a few other likes. I can't think of another one offhand, but it lets you know if the word is like something. So true, the one and the dollar sign one is like a number. Also billion is, even though it's a word, is like a number true. If you want to go more hardcore on grammar, you can even get them the sentences diagrammed for you. So if you run this, I want a laptop, an iPad laptop and a dog. So I was trying to see if it could figure out that list of words there sort of does and it gives you a English sentence diagram and you get this actually as a traversable tree that you can use in your code as well. I usually don't use these but it can be kind of interesting sometimes to see the diagram of a sentence. Really complicated sentences, automatic diagrammers tend to tend to fail often enough. By the way, one thing that is easy to run into as a problem when you run this diagram, notice that star is still there. So if you try to run this next thing, print out the sentence, you tend to think, why is my print taking so long? Well, it's because this guy up here is still running because it has to start a web server to actually display that to you. And you can see that is evident by that. So it's good to just break that. And now you can run these other things. This is what I was telling you before, where you take the words back to their root level. This is very useful. I will use this often because then you don't have to worry about like hanging, hang, hanging, hang. All those would go to hang. And this is just a list you can iterate over that and handle those as you want. Stop words. This is a very common term in natural language processing. You can see all the stop words here. These are words that are very common in English, but have usually, and I emphasize usually, very little value. So the stop words are often removed or de-emphasized. And this is just a list of the stop words. So a very common thing that you would do is you would loop over a sentence like this and remove the stop word. You're using relatively simple word counts and statistical analysis for your natural language processing probably need to remove the stop words. An example though, I ran into this when I was competing in a natural language processing on Kaggle. I was printing out the sentences that my program was not 
parsing correctly. And one sentence in particular, it was kind of interesting. It was, what is IT? Well, what is IT? It's the part of the company that handles the computer and data systems for the corporation. Well, the first thing that my program was doing, putting everything to lowercase. What is it? Okay, that's a whole different question. That is like... I don't know, if you brought something to show me at class, some new electronic device, and laid it on my desk, I'd be like, ooh, what is it? So just stripping everything to lowercase can get you in trouble. And then when I converted that sentence to and removed the stop words, it became this. A blank line because all three of those words were removed because they're all stop words. So this is a legitimate question that's asking something. What is what is it? But you have to realize these common acronyms and not just strip it or you're going to lose every time you make a transformation and remove junk or clean up. Every time you clean something, you're losing information. And maybe that information is not valuable, but you have to you have to be aware of these things in natural language processing. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about more natural language processing tools, particularly word to vec This content changes often, so subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on this course and other topics in artificial intelligence.